curious in the last couple of days if you're, you know, been seeing a lot of this for selling or has the volatility in the equity markets to you appeared to be a little bit more orderly? Um, no, people are nervous. So one, thank you for having me on your show. Um, but at the end of the day, people are just very nervous and everybody's trying to figure out what the Fed's going to do. Um, I think for us, what we're trying to do is just find situations where we can get overpaid for the risk. And, you know, we're buying a number of fixed income instruments, you know, bonds that I would tell you six months ago, we're trading at 7580 and today we're buying those same bonds uh somewhere around sort of 35 40 cents on the dollar mm -hmm. um you know in one situation excella technologies um we're buying those bonds at 35 you've got an 11 percent 11 and a half percent coupon so you're making we're buying around 35 you're making around uh, 33 percent current so you know we're getting paid quite a bit um and everybody's worried as to what's going to happen with the company, we think it's fine. So I could give you examples, you know, of these situations over and over again. But I, I think for us, um, yeah. you know, we're seeing a huge amount of opportunities out there. Distress is where the opportunities yes. are, Mark, which has taken some time to get to. Are you seeing that the distress we've seen in selling, maybe it be forced selling or not, that's gone into the public markets, has that come to a crescendo, do you think, yet? Have we hit some sort of bottom, or is there further to shoot a drop? No. No, I think there's more to drop. I mean, I think part of it is... Um, you know, people are trying to figure out what the Fed's going to do and how high inflation gets. So... You know, whereas I would have told you a week ago, everybody assumed um, the Fed was going to raise rates at the max 50 bips. You know, now the market's telling you that the Fed needs to raise it by 75 bips. Um, so I think you're going to have more selling. You're going to have more pain. It's going to continue. It'll continue between now and the end of the year. And I think part of it is you've got to sort of start getting involved in the market, buy things that you're comfortable with. Doesn't mean it's not going to get cheaper. Um, but I don't think you can ever time a bottom, so you want to get invested if you can. Mm -hmm. And if you're not thinking about just timing, Mark, what about the actual levels here? What is the low when you think about the S&P, and how wide do spreads get, especially in the high-yield market? Oh, I think... I think the market could go down a little bit more, you know, whether it's an extra five or 10%. Um, but you're getting there. A lot of it is getting priced in. So um, I, I think the summer is usually just very slow. Um, and then you'll have the next Fed meeting. Um, I think after that, um, that's when you'll get close to the low. Um, everybody knows we're either getting into a recession or it's going to be close to a recession. So um, I, I, I don't think there's a lot more negative news that's going to come out. You know, the question really is going to be how long is the recession? Hmm. Is it three months? Is it six months? Is it a year? I think ultimately it's going to be pretty short because hmm. the economy is doing okay. Um, it's just rates are making things more expensive. Like, just think of your home. Right. Uh, the average home is, is $300,000. That's mortgage. I mean, everybody's interest cost has gone up because of this, anywhere between 50 to 100 percent. That that's going to have a bigger impact on people than sort of inflation. So if the market is sort of hinting that they want to look at a 75 and a 75, if the Fed does 50, what does that mean in terms of being a dovish surprise for your markets? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think at the end of the day, the market wants it to be higher because they want the pain to come and go as quickly as possible. Um, I think the fear that ends up being if it's 50 is the next one 75 and the one after that 75, right? It's, I, I think the market wants certainty and that's not what it has right now. Um, but you may get some of that tomorrow um, when the Fed announces where they are and what they're raising it and the reasons why they didn't do 75 or the reasons why they did do 75. I, I think we, I, people love the guessing game. Mm -hmm. um, I like to just wait. I mean, I know uh, if I don't think a company is going to file for bankruptcy, if I think a company is going to be fine, I'm going to buy those bonds or I'm going to buy that stock um, 
because I know it's going to do well and it'll turn um, once all the bad news is out on the macro side. Talking of, well, bad news and, and some forced selling, we have seen a lot of pain suffered in the crypto market. Yep. And Mark, I know yes. that you're someone who looked at Block Tower, for example, analyzing crypto firms. Yep. How much further have we got to go in that particular area? Oh, well, that one, it feels like you've got more room. Um, and the simple reason is just, I think people um, viewed it as being a really safe instrument. Mm. And nobody thought Bitcoin was going to go as low as it has or Coinbase or a number of those. So because of that, um, a number of people now are very nervous and they're trying to figure out should they get out. So I, I don't think you have natural buyers. Um, I think you have natural sellers today. And nobody knows what the bottom is for that. But um, I think you'll still have a, uh, a bit of pain in the crypto space. What about all the institutional though, money that was meant to come in? What about the four billion raised by a venture capital fund such as Andreessen? Um, I think that money's there. Um, and I think it'll start coming in slowly. But um, what, what's the harm in waiting a month or three months? Like th there isn't any harm. Mm. So I think you do have a bunch of money on the sidelines. Um, but you've got a bunch of money on the sidelines in a number of sectors. So I, I, I think people right now are just saying, I, I'm going to come in, I'll come in slowly. Um, because I have time, because the news that's coming over the next three to six months, um, best case is it's flat, and worst case is it's negative, right? So what, what's the rush? Speaking about rush, to what extent are you ready to rush into investing in stocks tied to China? Is this the time to buy, or do you see more pain ahead as well with Chinese stocks? Um, I think for us, we're looking at things in Asia more than in China, because I do think, you know, when you look at what's happened in the U.S. where you had the reopening because of COVID, um, and we've gone way past that, right, because that, that all started mm -hmm. taking uh, place last year, um, you're going to see the same thing happening in Asia, same because China ends up dominating that um, as China keeps opening itself up because they've been closed um, for quite some time because of COVID and much, much worse than I think the U.S. ever went through. Um, you know, because in China, because of the regime, you're able to sort of keep people in their homes and close businesses. Um, I think as that opens up, you're going to see quite a bit of demand that starts coming out of China so, and out of Asia. So I think you'll see some positive momentum there. Big picture. Does 2 and 20 still work? I sure hope so. Yeah. <laughs>